Welcome to iHnani.com. This is the 8th video of Computer Fundamentals, Part 2. Level, 1. Computer Internals. In this video, I will explain on, how computers work. How computers work. The tutorial, we discussed on most of the parts that make up a computer. We also know, how, they are connected to each other. Now, let us find out, how all of these work together to get the results. A PC is a general purpose tool built around a CPU. All the other parts, that make up a computer, support the CPU to get the work done. In 1975, a man named, Ed Roberts, started selling computer kits based on a microprocessor chip, designed by Intel, which he named as, Altair, 8800. The Altair 8800 had an Intel, 8080, CPU, and was sold for 395 US dollars for the unassembled, while the assembled kit was sold for 498 US dollars. Popular Electronics Magazine ran a story about this in its January 1975 issue, which made these kits an instant hit. And started the age of the personal computer. A few years later, in 1977, Steve Wozniak and Steve Jobs, released the Apple II computer, which was one of the first highly successful and mass-produced microcomputers. Other manufacturers followed suit which made IBM, to jump into the personal computer game. Today, PCs are quite common. And more than 90% of PCs use, some kind of Windows operating system built by Microsoft. Hence, when somebody says a PC, they will be referring to a Windows-based PC, even though Apple Macintosh, or, Linux-based are also available. In this section, you'll learn about, how, the various parts work together in a basic operating session. When I say a session, I am referring to that period, from starting your computer, to using your computer, till you shut down your computer. First, we start by switching on a PC. To start a typical PC, you press the power button on the computer and the monitor. This turns on the internal power supply, SMPS, which converts the AC electric power, to low voltage DC power, as required by the internal components of the computer. Now the processor will be ready to start executing. But when the computer wakes up, it will not have anything in its memory. The memory is empty, and, it won't know what to do or where to look for instructions on what to do. Kind of processor amnesia. In order to help the processor in this situation, the processor is pre-programmed, to always look at a particular place in the system BIOS ROM, where the BIOS boot program is stored. In other words, both processor and BIOS manufacturers, develop their code, so that the processor once turned on, always starts executing at a particular location. This location just contains, the address of the actual place, where the real BIOS startup program is stored. Now the BIOS software starts. The BIOS first performs the pre-boot sequence of steps known as POST, acronym for Power on Self-Test. POST, is a built-in diagnostic program, that checks the computer hardware, to ensure that everything is present and functioning properly, before the BIOS begins the actual boot. If the PC, passes the post, it will have a single beep, and, if the post fails, the computer, will either not beep at all, or will generate a beep code, which tells the user the source of the problem. This is the sound that you hear when you switch on the computer. Next, the BIOS initializes and tests, that the hardware, peripherals, and external memory devices, are connected. 
This is when you see content on the screen which shows the BIOS software processing details. The BIOS now displays the BIOS startup screen. This is what you see when the system BIOS starts up. In this picture you can see a typical BIOS startup screen which usually displays, the BIOS manufacturer and version number. The BIOS date. Set a program key, usually, Dell, sometimes, F2, and sometimes any other key combination is used as a key to access the set a program. System logo. The BIOS serial number. Processor type and clock speed. Floppy drive if available. Hard drives. Usually drive C is attached to the hard drive and drive D and so on in case of additional ones. Memory size. Cache size. Display type. Serial ports and parallel ports if any. Plug and play devices. The BIOS now checks the CMOS setup to find the list of boot devices to boot from. Boot refers to the process of launching the operating system. Based on the configuration, the BIOS identifies the first boot drive from the CMOS configuration, and, then looks for boot information to start the operating system boot process. If it finds, what it is looking for. Then the BIOS starts the process of booting the operating system. At this point of time, the operating system is loaded into the memory and finally, the BIOS hands over the control of the computer over to the operating system. However, if the first device that has been configured is not found, the BIOS will then try the next device in the boot sequence, and will continue until it finds a bootable device. If the BIOS is not able to find any boot device with boot sector information, the system will then display an error message and then stops the process. The operating system now is ready. Assuming the operating system is one of the variants of Microsoft Windows operating system, you will be displayed with a desktop or a screen with some icons on it. Icons are clickable images which will open up the application that they represent. Though all these activities happen when we start a PC, all we see is just a boot screen for few seconds and then the operating system loading screen. Now that we have successfully started the PC and the operating system is loaded, let us start an application and use it. For this demonstration, we will be using a Microsoft Windows 7 operating system. Let us take an example of a browser app, which is the most used application. In this video, you can see the desktop screen with only one icon of Internet Explorer. To start a browser, on a Windows operating system, you will have to click on either the browser menu item in the start menu. This is the start button. Click on the start button, which will open up a window as you see in the video. Enter the text Internet Explorer to search for the browser menu item. This will show the menu items for Internet Explorer. You can click on this menu item to open Internet Explorer browser, or, click a browser icon on the desktop. This opens up the browser application. This is the address bar of the browser where you enter the URL. You type in the URL of the website, that you would want to open, using your keyboard, and click on Browse button or press Enter. This will send the request to the Internet, and return back the web page that you requested for, which will then be loaded on the browser window. Now though this is what happens from an end user's point of view. These simple few steps have led to a lot of activities inside your computer. Several components have worked together to get you the page you requested for. The keyboard, mouse and any other input devices that you will have used send your input to the operating system. First as a mouse click and then as the URL that you have typed in the browser window. 
While opening the browser, operating system receives the input from the mouse to start the application. When you type the URL, the operating system determines that the browser application is the active application and accepts the input as data for the browser. The browser application first stores the information entered temporarily in RAM via the operating system and then through the networking devices sends a request to a remote computer running anywhere in this world. In between accepting the request from the user and sending it to a remote computer, the browser sends the input or instructions to the CPU via the operating system. At the same time, the operating system is also gradually providing display information to the graphics card, directing what is to be displayed on the monitor. When the response arrives from the remote computer, the response is sent back to the browser, which in turn process the response and with the help of the operating system which in turn making use of the hardware and the computer to display the response to the user. When you close the web browser, the operating system clears the browser-related details from the RAM and clears the screen. When you choose to shut down, by clicking on the shutdown menu item or a button, the operating system closes all the programs if any are active. The operating system then writes all that are necessary, including system settings into appropriate files, so that it will have them ready to use when it boots up next time. Next the computer turns off the power. Now, we are back to square one, where, it all started before switching on the power button to start the computer. At this point, after completing the tutorial, you should now be somewhat familiar with the components of a computer and how all of these work together, to help you, in achieving what you set out for. We also have a level 3 tutorial, of Computer Fundamentals Part 2, wherein, we have covered each of these topics in more detail. Feel free, to finish the level 3 tutorial before proceeding, if you need a better understanding of the internals of computers. In this tutorial, we just covered all that happens until an operating system loads. In the next part of the series, we shall cover what is an operating system and its uses in detail. You can find a lot of free video tutorials, training materials, how-to videos and much much more at our site www.ignani.com. Check out the forum topic related to this tutorial on the site for all your questions.